Southern Style by Rosetta Monique Smith. I hunger for mornings filled with savory smells drifting from the kitchen of large mouth bass, walleye, and bark ribs, sausage, and pillowy fluffed eggs with cheese and grits boiling or frying in a sizzling skillet. Yes, I want to return to Gaston Lake, to the June bugs, water beetles, fireflies, and snakes, where Sunday's brunch will probably include black and white crappie and crabs or herrings from the Shawan River. I long for those country mile drives that leisurely reach destinations. Switching from rolling down the window to turning on the air conditioner as temperatures rise to unbearable heat. I want back the days of following a trail of longleaf eastern and western pines whose cones go kerplunk at night and salute the cloudless skyline along the daytime pathway. Stopping along the way to buy fresh watermelons, collard greens, peanuts, and pecans from the local farmers. It is always a joy to pick deep red, plump, and juicy Camarosa berries in late spring. Nothing beats moseying down the road a piece to a Southern-style family gathering, where usually a delectable meal awaits. A meal that includes pulled pork in place of the Northern-style barbecued ribs. You know... Ribs with the bone in and lots of sauce. Or fried chicken, fried catfish with buttered beans or collards cooked with fat back and sweet cornbread. All compliments of old granny's famous recipes. After dinner desserts such as peach and apple cobbler, banana pudding, pound cake with a scoop of homemade ice cream and a to-die-for Aunt Sarah's red velvet cake. Unlike those processed Sara Lee cakes sold from a freezer at the local grocer, don't get me wrong, Aunt Sarah from Henderson, North Carolina, is the real deal. And then here comes Uncle Charles with a jar of pickled pig feet. <laughs> Frequently, my adventurous nature leads me to accept sincere invitations to trailer parks in Gaston, Gates, and Halifax County to visit some elderly friend or cousin. I relish those visits, not because I enjoy seeing the dilapidated structures called homes. Those trailers remind me of corrugated cardboard boxes back home that are used to shelter the homeless from inclement weather. Substandard living conditions of any kind is a pet peeve of mine. I visited acres of farmland formerly harvested by bondsmen while hurricanes brought viable flooding tears. I went there because common decency still exists and all share a single gesture of courtesy. A familiar wave of a hand, backed by a smiling face, greets me. Country living is where no one is a stranger. Snow melts in 15 minutes, most winters. And life is as slow as molasses. But lively conversations abound from speakers who seem to have known me since birth. Yet their fast-speaking tongues with that southern draw is a language that some people up north mistake for ignorance instead of hospitable welcoming. Yes, I want to return to Gassing, North Carolina, to watch the sun settle over the lake in an eruption of crimson, gold, and orange to complete my day.